strong basket with the fragment of a past body love which remains over and above to them that are eaten. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Just yes, first the miracle recounted in today's gospel was the occasion for Christ's long discourse uh, concerning spiritual food and the food of the Holy Eucharist. Okay, and so this 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 uh, miracle has a special importance in the in the sense that it prefigures and also prepares the way for that great mystery that uh, that that continuous miracle of the blessed sacrament which we experience even today in our own midst. Now let us try to picture. Uh, the, uh, picture the order of the event prior to the miracle. Okay, you see that um, our Lord saw uh, from the mountain uh, where he was with the disciples, the crowd that followed him. Okay, he came down to them and received them kindly. He stopped them and healed their sick. He was with them till evening. And then, since it was getting late, the disciples had, had asked him to dismiss the multitude so that him himself also would refresh himself with food. But now, Christ um, um, bids them, the disciples, to feed the hungry multitude, the hungry crowd. And they, they thought, that they thought that was a serious joke, right? Because the number was so great. Okay? And then a commentator says that perhaps our Lord proposed the question to Philip said, When shall we buy bread that this may eat? Perhaps because Philip was the most anxious about dismissing the people. Uh, he was so perhaps he was so anxious that man this is getting late and if you don't dismiss the people they will die of hunger in this place but well that is just a conjecture we don't know exactly what happened but when our lord asked him he gave the same answer regarding the quantity of, of the people right and then the bread that will be required to feed them which given the circumstances they thought it was impossible okay now, if you were to think about the multitude, they were filled with excitement and enthusiasm about our Lord's miracles and also his kindness to the poor and afflicted and also about his teaching. So, because of all of this, they were drawn to him. So, they listened to him eagerly, not only when he chanced to come their way, like when he was in their city, okay? But and then and 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 when it gets a little inconvenience whatsoever. But they they were eager to listen to him even when he quietly left them and went over to a desert place. Okay? They followed him with that eagerness in great numbers. Those who could afford it crossed but the sea, that means they have to pay the, the, the boat men to take them across. Those who couldn't afford to pay for the boat, they have to take a long way around the sea by the uh, seashore to meet him on the other side. Just imagine what kind of eagerness that drove them to do that. So they went by foot through the longer way. Now, what was their desire? What was their sole desire to go this land to seek for our Lord? From all uh, uh, indications, it was to hear our Lord's word and also to be freed from any evils or infirmities under which they were laboring. They were not searching for any pleasure whatsoever. No, that was not in their dictionary, you would say so. But you ask yourself, what is the case with you? Do you listen to the word of God? Do you nurture any 
excitement whatsoever about listening to the word of Christ when it's preached to you in sermon or in catechism or um, in audio book or things like that or reading a spiritual book do you show any excitement about things like this? do you show any enthusiasm or only when no inconvenience is probably no inconvenience to you alright for instance when maybe the place for the mass is close to you or the house only when there is a free ride to church or to and back or because or only when you don't have to go travel one hour two hours to go to mass or imagine another situation when only when there is food in church to eat imagine that right and see you very plainly is it only when you are eager about the, church, uh, the things of God? Or do you have eagerness for the word of God even when there is great inconvenience involved? For instance, you, you have to trace a long distance in order to get to church or travel a long distance once in a while. Or even have, when you have to suffer rejection from your friends and family for the name of Christ. Are you still eager to, to, to seek the truth about God and His Word? Well, the multitude that followed Christ, we, they were not searching for pleasure, okay? No, but they, to be, they were searching to be instructed in the doctrine of life. And our Lord, our Lord's doctrine is not at all pleasurable to those with carnal minds and those with uncircumcised ears and hearts, as the uh, Satan we describe the, the unbelieving Jews. Now, think about the fact that many today seek their pleasure in the name of seeking Christ. Okay? They are only excited by prosperity gospel and the gospel of indifferentism of course the modernist new gospel if you will preach to them the, the gospel of exclusivism as they call it the, the gospel of Christ that, that will not admit any error they don't want to hear any of that well we hope that none of us is excited at such kind of gospel now the day was past spent and our Lord saw that they were not um, worried, anxious for their life or, or what they should eat. Indeed, they forgot all about that. They were, they were just there with sin throughout the day. And, but like our Heavenly Father, our Lord knew that they had need of this thing. They had the need of what to eat or what to drink. And so because He knew their need, he knew exactly what he would do to meet them, so to say. So, to provide for their needs, he worked an astounding miracle. Imagine feeding 5,000 men with five loaves of bread and two fishes. Here, you're not counting women and children. And not only you, just imagine that in, the, in, the, in things like this, there will be greater number of women, alright, and children, so to say. So they only counted the men. Normally they count from those from the 20 years and above. So those below, all those numbers are not taken into confidence. But what a miracle to reward their, their confidence, confidence in Christ. And not only feeling this number with this few um, uh, meat meals, but the less of our was was even more than what was used to feed them, to feed 12 baskets. Imagine that. Of course, this miracle can be said to have been a sort of reward for the confidence the multitude had in Christ. They were confident in Him so much as to forget their need for food till evening. Okay? Of course, that is how every sincere Earnest and reasonable Christian ought to have confidence in God that you so have confidence in God that you forget about yourself, you forget about your needs, and seek first as 
as our Lord says, his kingdom and things that are to his glory. Alright? So, um, he said, the psalmist tells us, cast thy care upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. Why you show earnestness and energy in your duties and business of life, okay? You don't, you must have to show earnestness in, in those things. You shouldn't be the lazy one with your arms folded there waiting for manna to come from heaven. No. You must show earnestness and energy in your daily duties and business. But remember, remember to render to God the things that are God's. Okay? With firm confidence in God, fear not to give a little time to the service of God, to the need of your soul, like things like prayer, your daily prayer, reflection, and things that concern repentance, repentance with your whole heart. Fear not to devote your time to things like this. It is in such matters that you show your confidence in God. Be not reluctant to give few hours to lengthen devotion, for instance, the stations of the cross, okay, and our normal week weekend activities. Now, listen to the words of our blessed Lord. He said, Be not to the Jewish ones, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things, the hidden seek. Seek ye therefore first the kingdom of God and his justice, and all these things shall be added unto you. Yes, dear faithful, like the multitude today, have confidence in God. Be fully convinced of his majesty and your total dependence on him, okay? And also be, be confident in his. It is in his good will towards you to meet your needs as he has promised. Mm -hmm. While you strive to collaborate with his providence by being earnest in your daily duty and business. Forget completely about yourself, accepting your sins, of course, and your unworthiness. And be eager, be eager for the things of God and you will be rewarded by a miracle like this multitude today, an astounding miracle of grace. As children of promise, as we write in today's uh, episode, let us um, exhibit our confidence, same confidence in God, just like our father in faith, Abraham, um, trusted that God would bring to the fruition his own way. And of course, that is how we are to show ourselves to be the children of promise, the children of the faith. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.